the benefits of constant expectation of the second coming of Jesus Christ. We all know that we are moving, and time is not stationary. There is a beginning, and there will be an end. Time is not stationary. Each day we live, history is being written, and the history of your life is being written. Therefore, we should be very careful about how we live. We need to come to the realization and the acceptance that our lives will one day be reviewed. There is a judgment day coming, a judgment day that no man could avoid, a judgment day that no woman could avoid. Hebrews 9 verse 27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Now I want you to put yourself in that situation and think about that day and that moment when you stand before the Almighty God and you are being judged. Just close your eyes for the next 60 seconds and think about how you will feel in that moment when you are being judged. I want you to remember that when you are being judged, you will be standing alone. Your husband or your wife won't be there. Your father or mother who used to pray for you won't be able to stand with you in that situation. I often think about this day. I often think about what I will think about when this day happens. Will I be standing there in regret at all the missed opportunities I had to share the gospel with a friend who I knew was going to hell? Will I be standing in regret at all the times I indulged in sin willfully? I want you to think of Judgment Day. It's a sobering thought that we will be judged. When thinking about this, I asked myself, how can I live in a way in which that when the day of judgment comes, I will not be full of regrets or worry? The answer is simple. Live a life that is totally dependent upon the finished work of Christ Jesus on the cross. A life that looks forward to his second coming. A life of constant expectation and anticipation that my Lord may come today. The truth is, you and I are not going to heaven because of what we did or what we do. It's all because of Jesus. It's all about Him. Since the time Jesus ascended into heaven, many people have been talking about His second coming. They have been making it clear that He will come back the second time. However, a lot of people have given up because it seems as if He won't come again. Acts 1 verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Jesus is coming back, and nothing can stop that. One day, Jesus will appear with a shout, and the whole world will see him. He will come with the archangels and bring justice to the world. That is the fact that no one can change. We have had many people trying to change this, and some people are trying to make sure that no one believes in this message. They want people to give up expecting. They want you and I to miss out on that glorious day. That day will come, and I am telling you that the day is nearer than before. Day by day. We are moving closer to the time when Jesus will come. History is on a line. There is a beginning, and there will be an end. And each day, we are moving on this line, from the beginning to the end. No man knows the day or the hour. Anyone who sets dates, they are a false prophet, and they are perverting the whole world of God. No one knows when. 
The question is, are you ready? Don't get tired of waiting for the Lord to come. Don't give up like some people have given up. A day will come when you will be rewarded for your constant expectation. But what are the benefits of constant expectation here on earth? So today, I am here to encourage you to live in expectation. The first benefit is that it helps you live a holy life. As a Christian, if you are expecting the coming of Jesus, you will struggle to put your hands in dirty things. For instance, if you knew the return of the Lord Jesus was today, you wouldn't commit a sin willfully today. You would put your body under subjection, and that is the attitude you need to have. If you knew Jesus was coming today, you would deal harshly and decisively with sin. That is the attitude you need to have. You will know how to run away from the things that can cause you to miss out on that glorious paradise that has been prepared by Christ. The more you focus on the second coming, the more you remain focused on the right thing, and the more you have the power to control your body not to make you fall. Paul was expectant, and because of this, he was able to beat his body and put it under his control. Are you able to control your body? 1 Corinthians 9 verses 26 to 27 I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as the one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I should be cast away. Don't feel like Jesus is not coming the second time. Don't let anyone make you lose faith in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The devil has sent his people out there to make all of us fall. He has put in place different strategies to make us fall and forget about the coming of our Lord Jesus. But we need to daily remind ourselves, this could be the day my Lord comes. This could be the day I am taken to be with him in heaven. Not only does expecting the coming of Jesus help you to live a holy life, but it gives hope of a better tomorrow. Expecting the coming of Jesus gives you hope that tomorrow will be better. It gives you hope that one day you will get out of this mess, this evil world, this world where evil is the order of the day. Expecting Jesus gives an assurance of a greater tomorrow. Living with this expectation means no matter what you go through on earth, you know that one day I am going to see the King. One day I am going to be with my Redeemer. This is why Jesus told us that we should not worry about anything. We must focus on Him alone, because He has overcome the world, and He will give us victory, and we shall have peace. What is it we want in our lives? What is that thing that is giving you a sleepless night? One day, Jesus will come and everything will be gone. Think about these things. Let these things give you the strength to carry on in the path of righteousness. Let this give you the hope of a better tomorrow. You will hear people say, Christians are just saying these things to make themselves believe that Jesus will come again. They are saying that Jesus is not coming back, because it is over 2,000 years now. God's time is not the same as ours. The way He thinks is different from the way we think. We may feel like 2,000 years is too long, but God is saying, when it is time, Jesus will come, and we will experience a better life with Him. This is what you should hold in your heart and never let it go. The expectation of the return of Christ will enable you to go higher in Christ. The constant expectation of the second coming will make you do things that will take you higher in Christ, and that will make you become blessed. When you live in expectation, you will focus on Matthew 6 verse 33, and seek ye first the kingdom of God. So many people in this world are focusing on stuff buying and acquiring stuff. 
All they have hope for is this life and this life alone. But when you live with the expectation of the Lord Jesus' return, you will focus on eternity. You won't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. You will rather lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Your heart and mind won't be on this earth, it will be with the Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Aren't you tired of this world? Aren't you tired of how people treat one another? Aren't you tired of seeing the sin and the corruption in the world? Aren't you tired of the us-against-them mentality the world has? But what gives a child of God strength is that each day brings them closer to the return of the King.